You know, the main thing here is we're not really trying to prove that Dolutegravir is better than efavirenz. What we were really trying to show, so we're using the efavirenz arm as a positive control to just um, give, a, give a sense of context and to say, okay, you know, if 89% of people did well in the efavirenz arm, that's, that's higher than ever, has ever really been seen in a TBHIV trial. And so that means that the patients were being well cared for, that the trial sites were doing a good job of, of keeping track of people and managing their TB and their HIV. So that is reassuring to us um, that, that that arm was doing well. And so what we're really, what we're really interested in is how, how things go with, with the dolutegravir. Giving the twice daily dose, are the concentrations sufficient? Do we have good virologic efficacy? Did the CD4 count come up as it should? What was the tolerability? Did people have more iris episodes? Was there any sort of liver toxicity? Was there any sort of um, sign that there, that there was an issue with using these drugs together? Because, you know, in, in the label it says you can use dolutegravir with rifampin, just use it twice a day based on healthy volunteer PK data. There's been nothing uh, released in patients that have HIV and also TB co-infection or taking all their medications. So, so it was really, um, I mean, there's a balance between doing the full comparative study that would take seven years and doing the, um, you know, doing this type of trial that's that's not powered for for comparison, but can give us good information about safety and efficacy. Um, so, eighty-one percent of patients had virologic response as defined by the snapshot analysis, which is um, so. So, the, the the primary endpoint is at forty-eight weeks. So, we haven't gotten to that, but we're showing here the interim analysis at twenty-four weeks, which essentially comprises the time that people were getting TB and HIV treatment together. And then the, the subsequent weeks, they were just finishing, you know, keeping on their HIV treatment, but not their TB would have been, would have, treatment would have been finished. Okay, so, um, so what I'm excited about, I mean, there was a really rapid virologic response. Uh, we saw that the drug levels were adequate. We saw that by four weeks, 50% of people had suppressed viral load, which is, you know, which is very, which is very potent. And, um, and then when you look at that 24 week data, uh, the people that, you know, there were several people that um, did not have a viral load less than 50 in the dolutegravir group. And when you dive into that group, they all had a viral load uh, between 50, or four of those five had a viral load between 50 and 400 copies per mil, and three of those four went on to suppress their viral load. So the drug was working. And then if you look at the people who were in the, um, who did not come in for a week 24 viral load, um, for whatever reason, there were people who were lost to follow up um, along the way. If you read back through their charts, there wasn't any evidence that they had been having any sort of adverse events or anything had happened that um, that would it wasn't at one particular site it wasn't at a certain time in treatment that would suggest there was some sort of pattern um, related to that so and and a lot of those people had suppressed viral load at the time that they were lost to follow-up so so I feel I feel good that that it works um, viral load comes down and then you know there's been this concern that um, integrase inhibitors will um, because of the rapid virologic response that there would be a lot more um, incidence of iris of immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome and and we really didn't see that so um, you know there there were a few cases in each arm um, not not more in the dolutegravir arm and no one had to discontinue treatment related to iris of um, in terms of liver toxicity, there was one grade three event in each arm, but um, but those patients also didn't have to stop their their treatment because of that. So so if you just look at the dolutegravir arm, no drug discontinuations because of toxicity, no drug discontinuations because of iris, no deaths. Um, the people who didn't have suppressed viral load, a lot of those patients went on to suppress and were really in that window between 50 and 400. Um, and then a lot of the people who didn't, who um, you know, were lost to follow up, had had a virologic response prior to that. So, I feel, um, I feel good about it. I, I think, you know, the the way that most. Um, you know, most programs in the world work, the first line treatment for HIV, like in the United States, we have all sorts of drugs to choose from. But in most countries where TB is endemic, there is a first line HIV treatment, and then, you know, there are second and third line regimens that are available. And so the question for programs is, look, if our first line regimen is, let's say it's a Fabrins, if our first line regimen is a Fabrins, can everyone get a Fabrins? Can pregnant women get it? Can t patients with TB, can children get it? Can we provide it to everyone who needs it? And then, so that's really where 
where the question was with Dolutegravir. beer. So if Dolutegravir is being rolled out globally, and it is, I mean, it's, you know, first line treatment in South Africa now that has, I think, a sixth of the world's uh, uh, cases of, of, um, of HIV. It's being rolled out in Kenya and multiple places um, around the world. And so there, so the what the practitioners and the programs are asking, well, okay, if everyone is getting Dolutegravir, do we have to have a carve-out for TB where patients who have TB get something else? And so it's so having some data in patients now when the, when this regimen is being rolled out very widely is is really nice because then we can say that uh, no patients with TB don't need to be switched to your second line therapy or your third line therapy they can get first line treatment they just need to have the nice do night dose of the dolutegravir um, during the time they're getting TB treatment and then for two weeks after that.